Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's update is overflowing with breakthroughs, bold engineering moves, and a few developments that genuinely feel like they're nudging the future a little closer to the present. If you enjoy the kind of news that makes you rethink what's possible in transportation and energy, you're in for a good one, because nearly every topic today has some kind of, wait, seriously, moment built in. Let's start with something that sounds almost unbelievable at first. A new zinc-based battery approach that uses advanced 3D printing techniques. The idea behind it isn't just to rearrange chemistry, it's to overhaul the battery's internal structure in a way traditional manufacturing simply can't. The result, at least according to early demonstrations, is an energy storage system capable of lasting millions of miles. Literally, millions. It's rare that any battery advancement feels like a genuine leap rather than a small step, but this one pushes into territory that starts to challenge how we define a lifetime component. If a battery outlasts the car, the owner, and possibly the next owner, that has big implications for cost, recyclability, and long-term sustainability. Innovations like this are the kind of thing that quietly rewrite the rules while most people aren't watching. Speaking of rewriting the rules, imagine a wheel motor so powerful that one single unit could put out a thousand horsepower. Yes, per wheel. That's what a company working with axial flux motors has demonstrated, and the number almost sounds like it came from a science fiction spec sheet. But the more you look into it, the more plausible it becomes. The surprising part is not just the raw power, but how compact and lightweight the motor is. When motors get this efficient and this potent, they stop being just a way to move a vehicle and start becoming a tool for entirely new engineering strategies. With four of these motors, you're looking at 4,000 horsepower in a vehicle without needing a massive engine or bulky driveline. It raises all kinds of questions about where efficiency gains might show up, because sometimes higher power doesn't only mean going faster. It can also translate into smoother operation, better control, and new design freedoms. It makes you wonder what a vehicle like Aptera could do with a propulsion system that advanced. Speaking of Aptera, their recent update sparked a lot of curiosity, especially because of a moment where part of the presentation was blurred out. Anyone who saw it probably paused and asked the same question. What exactly did they hide? The last time I visited their facility, there were things I wasn't allowed to film, pieces of hardware that were clearly part of their secret sauce. So when I saw that blurred section, my mind immediately went back to that experience. It wouldn't surprise me at all if what they were hiding was either a new in-house design or a licensed component from a partner they're not ready to disclose. Companies don't blur screens for no reason. Blurring usually means future announcement, future reveal, or future competitive advantage. Whatever the case, it's always interesting when a company that typically shares a lot decides that one small detail has to stay in the vault. Another thoughtful voice in the Aptera conversation recently discussed the broader update and pointed out several meaningful takeaways. The interesting part wasn't just the summary, but the analysis of what Aptera is doing behind the scenes. There was a sense that the company is shifting gears into a more disciplined phase of preparation, tightening processes, lining up supply chain elements, and pushing toward the kind of readiness that separates early stage vision from actual production execution. When someone who pays close attention to detail gives a nod of approval to Aptera's recent moves, it adds weight to the feeling that the project is entering a more serious, grounded chapter. And while we're on the subject of batteries again, there's another breakthrough worth talking about, this time in LFP chemistry. A major manufacturer has managed to cut costs by over 40% while increasing energy density and even extending cycle life. That combination doesn't happen often. Usually improving one dimension forces a compromise somewhere else, but this advancement seems to push LFP closer to traditional lithium-ion performance without losing the stability that makes LFP so attractive. 
It tightens the race among different chemistries, lithium ion, lithium silicon, lithium sulfur, solid state, each trying to win the balance of safety, energy, longevity, and cost. When cost drops this dramatically, it pushes EV adoption faster, widens accessibility, and changes the economics of storage for homes, grids, and commercial use. Every time a battery jumps forward, it shifts the direction of the entire industry, and this one is no exception. All of these advancements also feed into a bigger question. How close can batteries eventually get to the energy density of gasoline? For years, that comparison seemed like a distant dream, but with breakthroughs happening faster than they can even be summarized, the gap keeps narrowing. Maybe batteries never reach the same energy density fully, but they may reach functionally equivalent territory. Dense enough, safe enough, and cheap enough that the difference no longer matters. At the speed things are moving, it wouldn't be shocking if today's predictions look quaint by the time the next decade rolls around. Now, here's something that caught me off guard, a deep dive from a respected engineering voice about long-term ownership issues with a luxury EV model. Not the usual short-term impressions, but real concerns that only show up after extended use. Software quirks, hardware inconsistencies, and the kind of day-to-day -day problems that don't appear in polished promotional test drives. It was surprising because the short-term driving experience is genuinely impressive. I've driven one myself and enjoyed it. But long-term experience is a different lens, and the findings painted a more complicated picture. It's a reminder that innovation isn't just about making something fast or elegant. It's about making something reliable, consistent, and durable over time. On another front, one of Aptera's leaders will be speaking at a major virtual event focused on electric transportation. The interesting twist is that the event information itself is unusually restricted. Instead of open registration, the page directs you to contact the organizers directly for details. That level of exclusivity makes it feel like something significant is being discussed behind the scenes, perhaps aimed at investors, partners, or industry insiders, rather than the general public. I reached out to see what's going on, and I'm hoping to share anything I learn once they respond. It certainly makes the whole thing feel more intriguing than your standard conference appearance. Now, let's shift gears into a couple of things that genuinely delighted me this week. First, Honda is launching and landing small rockets. Yes, Honda, the same company known for motorcycles, generators, and reliable cars is now testing reusable rocket prototypes and doing so successfully. One of their tests earlier this year managed both launch and landing, which is remarkable for a company relatively new to aerospace. Are they trying to challenge the industry leaders? Maybe not directly, but competition is good. More players in the space sector mean more innovation, lower cost, and faster progress toward making space travel something more people can dream about realistically. I've always wanted the chance to go to space someday, and every new entrant in the field pushes that possibility just a little further into reach. Another story that stood out came from observing changes happening in China's fueling infrastructure. Gas stations, once considered permanent fixtures of the landscape, are starting to disappear in certain regions as electric vehicles become dominant. They're being replaced by charging hubs because the market has already shifted. This isn't a prediction of what might happen, it's what is happening, right now. When a country transitions this quickly, you can literally watch an old era fading away while a new one emerges. It mirrors what happened years ago in places where EV adoption skyrocketed Ollie, but seeing it unfold now at scale is a powerful sign of things to come. When a technology exceeds expectations, people move toward it and entire industries reshape themselves around that shift. As for me, I'll wrap things up on a personal note. I'm still working toward making a trip to visit Abterra again, and the support I've received lately has been incredible. 
What started as a simple idea has grown much faster than I expected, and every bit of help gets me closer to being able to travel there and bring back first-hand insights. If you want to support that journey, you're welcome to. And if not, simply sharing this video or helping me reach my next subscriber milestone makes a huge difference. I never expected to get this close to my goals so quickly, and it's thanks entirely to all of you. With a bit more momentum, I might even reach the subscriber target I set for the end of the year. That would be an amazing milestone, and I appreciate everyone who's helping me move toward it. Thank you for spending time with me today. There's a lot happening in the world of EVs, energy, and advanced engineering, and it's exciting to explore it together. I'll see you in the next update.